Welcome to Laptop Power Wall, episode 32, More Charging Options. This is just a quick follow-up to my last episode. I forgot to mention that one of the downsides of this balanced charging scenario, where you've got 10 cells wired in series, char- balance charging from an iCharger or an iMac V6, one of the drawbacks is that when it starts charging, it will try to ramp up to the current that you set, say uh, 2 amps or 1 amp, and it will push that through the main charging leads until one of the cells reaches 4.2 volts. And when one does, then it stops charging through these leads and it starts trickle charging through the balance leads. So when I'm charging this from the iCharger, these 3.9 volt cells are probably going to hit 4.2 volts first. And the moment it does that, then it switches down into gentle charging mode, uh, constantly checking the voltage of all the 10 cells. And last will be the, the cell here that I measured at 3.2 volts. It's most likely to reach 4.2 last. And that could take hours and hours because it's charging everything else but the the first cell that reached 4.2. It's charging all of those really really low current through the through the balance wires. So that is um, why uh, balance charging is can be agonizingly slow. Um, but on the other hand you know the charger is paying attention to the voltage on all of the 10 cells as it's going and uh, you can walk away and come back next day and um, that'll be done. So there's that. One other question I had about this from one of my um, viewers was there's a few people who have tried using these modules to charge a battery pack that's already wired in series and that leads to problems because the negative power rail on these modules is connected to the negative of the battery. If you've got three of these powered from the same power supply, so you've got the negatives all wired to the negative of your power supply and you've got the positives all connected together, connected to the positive on your power supply, then because the negative of the module is connected to the negative of the battery, if this is wired in series, then this negative will be connected to the negative power rail, and so will this one, but this positive is connected in your series pack to this negative. So effectively you've got a short between across this battery and this battery will be effectively shorted and uh, then bad stuff will happen. Uh, Almost certainly the bad stuff will fry the modules almost instantly. Um, Your battery will probably be fine because it can can, um, pump so much current through these poor little uh, modules that I'm sure these will fry first. So that's why you can't use these modules to charge batteries that are already wired in series. Uh, So to clarify how this is wired, the negative power rail on all 20 of these is connected to negative. The positive power rail is connected to all 20. But each battery is only connected to one charger. So the positive of each one of these is not connected to anything else. So these are not in series, and they're also not in parallel. The modules are powered in parallel, but the batteries are not in parallel. It's almost as if you could kind of think of it as if one of these is like an IMAX V1, an IMAX that can only charge one battery only cope with one battery and it can't do discharging and it has no display 
um, and it has no protection. But apart from that, it's exactly like an IMAX B1. Um, and if you can imagine, you've got 20 IMAX B1s all charging their own single battery. That's what this is a bit like. So, there's that balance charging, and there's the individual charging with these TP4056 modules. And then there's the way that Jehu Garcia does it, which is to wire a whole bunch of cells in parallel. And I'll just draw how he does that, um, because it's quite simple. He's got an IMAX B6, IMAX, with the main charging leads, and then he has 16, 16 is 16 battery holders, which is quite a lot. And I'll show you how those are wired. It's pretty straightforward. The negatives of all the battery holders are connected together and plugged into the negative on the IMAX output. And the positives are all connected together. Like that. So, uh, it's incredibly simple wiring setup, which is one of its key strengths. You don't have to think too hard about wiring that. But there, as he demonstrated, there is one issue with this setup. Because these are all wired up in parallel, even before you connect it to the IMAX B6, as you plug in cells into the battery holders, they will equalize their voltages because they're wired in parallel. So if you have a whole lot of three point something volt cells, here's 3.8, 3.6, 3.9, 3.8, 3.9, 3 3.9. If I took away the 3.6, I've got a spread of 0.1 volts and those will equalize really quickly um, and they'll be fine. If, on the other hand, you have one cell that is 1.8, then the moment you plug that in, there'll be a huge amount of current uh, rushing in to equalize the voltage on the cell, from these cells. And Jehu did an experiment and I think he was getting up, he had a whole bunch of 4.2 volt cells and he was measuring uh, I think up to 3 amps going into the low cell. Uh, the drawback of that is ideally you don't want 3 amps pumping into an unknown, untested cell because you don't know how well it's going to cope with it. Um, and if in like in this case, it's a really dead cell. Uh, 1.8 volts is way past what's considered dead by most people. The way to bring those back to life is to trickle charge them very gently, like 0.1 of a volt or even 0.01 of a volt for hours and hours. Um, to slowly, slowly, slowly bring them up to... Um, some reasonable voltage like 3 volts. That scenario is not ideal. The solution to that is pretty straightforward. You don't mix and match uh, cells that have a wide variance in their voltages. So you measure all your cells beforehand and my advice would be don't have a spread more than 1 volt. So 3.6 would be fine. 3 is probably going to be okay-ish, um, depending on how nervous you are and you might leave that one out. Um, and as, as long as you do that, as long as you don't have a huge uh, variance in your voltages as you're plugging them in, then charging by 
this parallel scenario is going to be fine. It's going to be a great system because it's so easy to wire up and kind of easy to think about. So that's my thoughts on parallel charging. Personally, I'm a uh, great fan of these ones because you have individual control, which is quite nice. Whereas, whereas this, you still have to wait for all of them to, the whole group has to reach 4.2 volts. But apart from that, it's a perfectly reasonable way to do it. That's my, my thoughts on parallel charging. If you don't already, you definitely need to be watching Jehu Garcia. He's got lots of great answers to battery questions that are well worth having a look at. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.